Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be starting chapter 15 from IB Math Studies and this is a chapter on trigonometry, the super super fun, super super challenging and somewhat interesting topic. Now this is obviously things like sine, cosine and tangent that you may have heard about before but we're going to start from scratch assuming that you don't remember anything. So let's actually talk about the history of these funny sounding functions which are of course sine cosine and tangent so there's three of them we're going to be studying today and uh let's start with the history so who do you have to blame for all the sine cosine and tangent stuff well this guy right here this is Aryabhata, a really ancient indian mathematician who basically invented uh what we know today as a sign he basically referred to it as as a sine leg which would be this red part inside a circle and the word for this in, in Hindi, or in the language that this guy was uh, speaking, is Ardha Ja. So this was actually the original name for this particular uh, relationship or ratio that then transformed into what we know today as a sign. So this was the original name, and he kind of, just to make it short, referred to it as Ja. So this was actually what this was used to be known as. Now, this was uh, something like 1500 years ago, then a few hundred years later, the Arab uh, mathematicians came in and decided to actually take a look at his studies and translate this. But as they were translating it, it actually changed its meaning and also its pronunciation to a word that was Ja'ib, which in Arabic means uh, like a, a bay or a, a cove, or basically something groovy like this, so like a bay of, you know, a water bay or something. So this became Ja'ib, and it stayed like that for quite a few hundred years until um, even more, a few hundred years later, the, um, the translator that actually spoke Latin decided to translate this word and this concept into, uh, into language that he understood, and this is actually his uh, his picture. This is Gerard of Cremona, the guy who lived uh, in Spain. And he was actually an, a very well-known translator of Arabic texts into Latin. And he translated this into Latin. But as he was translating it, he had to change the word again. And what he changed it in, into was the word sinus, which is Latin for curve. So just like the... Just like the idea here was to have a bay, this was a curve now. So this was sinus in Latin. And with time, this of course changed into sine, which was basically a lazy way of saying sinus. And today it's known as a sine or S-I-N as, as it is written on your calculator. So this is basically the history of this really complicated word and an even more complicated concept. But so. What is this concept? What is this concept of sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, if you just realize, or if you just try to understand what it actually means, you'll come to a conclusion that it's nothing uh, more than a ratio of two numbers, ratio of two sides. So both three ratios, are sine, cosine, and tangent, are nothing more than basically two sides divided by each other. So let's actually take a look at this, um, starting with the sine. Now let's take a look at this triangle and just to kind of visualize what's going on here. So let's just name these sides A, B, and C. So there's actually six different ways for us to find ratios of two different sides in this triangle. So there's obviously A divided by B and B divided by A. Then there's A divided by C, C divided by A. And finally, we of course have B divided by C and c divided by b. So there's six different ratios. And essentially, this is what the sine, cosine, tangent represent, except that we only have three because the other three are kind of redundant. They basically give you the opposite answer. Uh, so for the sakes of convenience, we're actually going to redraw this and change it into colors just to make it more visual. And let's start with the sine again. So what is sine? Well, sine is actually uh, simply defined as the opposite side to an angle that you're looking at. In this case, it's our blue angle right here. Uh, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. So if we were to draw this in color, let's actually make our opposite side yellow. Our adjacent side is going to be green. And then our hypotenuse is going to be orange. And so what is sine? Well, sine in this case is going to be 
yellow divided by divided by orange. So it's the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. There's so many different ways of trying to remember these ratios, but I personally find that the more visual approach is better than so-called SOCATOA, which is the infamous uh, mnemonic for trying to remember this. And I'll explain to you why I don't like using it in a second. But uh, So basically, yes, so this is the opposite side or the far side divided by the hypotenuse of the long side. Then we have cosine and cosine equals to the close side, the adjacent side, so the side that's the closest to the angle, once again divided by hypotenuse, so divided by the orange side. And lastly we have tangent, and tangent is once again starts with the opposite side, so the opposite side of the angle, but this time we're going to be dividing not by hypotenuse, but by the adjacent side, divided by the green side. So it's the opposite divided by the uh, adjacent. Now the American math books love to use this mnemonic SOCATOA to help you remember this. And a lot of people swear by this saying that it's so easy to remember these using this because it's basically sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, but here's my problem with it, at least in English. The word SOCATOA does not actually have H or H here because H is silent. Because H is silent, a lot of people get confused. What is SOCATOA? They forget about the H. And so because of that, I personally find that it's a little bit redundant to use this in English. It might work in a different language where H is not silent, but not in English. So a better way of remembering it is visually or by just remembering that sine is the far side divided by hypotenuse, cosine is the close side uh, divided by uh, hypotenuse, and lastly tangent is the other two sides starting with the opposite, but hypotenuse is this time is not included, so it's the opposite divided by adjacent. Now hopefully this is kind of clear, and let's actually move on and talk about, well, why do we need all this for? So what is, what is for example, sine of 40? What does it mean? What is the sine of 40? If you were to go to your calculator and enter this, no, let's actually do it right now. So here we go, sine of 40. So what does it give us? It gives us 0.745, it gives us a ratio. So what this means is that if we have uh, an angle, if we have the angle here that is 40 degrees, uh, the sine of 40 will give us a ratio of 0.745. In other words, the, uh, the yellow side divided by the orange side uh, the ratio between them will be 0.745. Um, so if, like for example, if if this yellow side was like 745 units long and this side was, right here was 1000 units long, then the ratio would be 0.745. And so this is basically a way for us to kind of try to find either the ratio or if you're using the inverse of a sign to find the angle. So here's a very common question. So here's a very common question. So we're given the ratio, we're told that uh, the sine of, let's just call this angle theta, which is a very common letter to use for trigonometry, sine of theta equals to, just say it's uh, 0.52. And um, we are asked to find this angle, so find the angle. We know that yellow divided by orange will give us 0.52, find the angle. And this is where we uh, the other function comes in. This is a function from your calculator, the inverse of a sine. And it actually looks like this. It looks like this. It has a minus one here. Uh, so what, this is what we're going to be doing. We need to find inverse sine of theta. Now, how do we do this on a calculator? Well, it's super, super easy. If you look at any calculator, uh, you'll see that there's a sine, cosine, and tangent here, but there's also there's also inverse of a sine right here, inverse of a cosine right here, and inverse of a tangent right here. It's a little bit smaller. So what you need to do is basically uh, enter second sine and then 0.52. And you're about to get the answer, but here's the thing. If your answer is still in decimals, you need to do something really, really important. And this is mostly for uh, scientific and uh, graphing calculators, not so much for if you're just using your cell phone. You need to go to mode, and this is really important before every test, go to mode and scroll down to radian and then switch it to degree because right now we got the answer in radians, not in degrees. So this is really important. You want the answer in degrees. So let's try this again. Uh, sine, inverse sine of 0.52, 
we will now give us an angle in degrees and the answer is 31.3 degrees. So that's actually the angle theta right here. It's about 31.3 degrees. So basically this is how you do it. And let's actually try a, an example from the book before we finish this and see if you kind of get the idea. How do we find um, the angle and how do we find the ratio of two sides if we have the angle? And this is example four from page 452 in your books. And there's two questions here. I'm going to do just one. The other one you can try by yourself. And basically it says this to three significant figures measure the angle mark theta. Uh, and okay, don't measure, find the measure of the angle mark theta. So find this angle right here. You have two sides, which are here and here, and you know that this is a right triangle. So, what do we do? Well, what can we what can we use to find this angle? So we have the opposite side, and then we have the hypotenuse. Now I used a different color this time, but if you remember what I just uh, told you a few minutes ago, this is basically a sine. So we need to use sine here. And so what we'll get is we know that sine of theta equals to two divided by three. So this is the ratio that we'll get if we divide these two sides. And so in other words, what you're looking for is theta. To find theta, you have to do the inverse sine of two over three. So this is what you're going to be doing on your calculator. So let's go to the calculator and enter the values. Inverse sine of two divided by three. And this will give us the angle uh, for uh, for theta here. The angle is 41.8 degrees and it's three significant figures. So the answer is 41.8, 41.8 degrees. And basically that's how you do these questions. Now we're going to stop this here. And in the next video, we're going to take a, a look at some more of the more challenging trigonometry questions, specifically the ones with 3D shapes and 3D figures. Uh, hopefully this was clear and and hopefully you enjoyed the video as well. Anyway, good luck to you guys and bye-bye.